everyone. I'm Chief Meteorologist Elena Rusk with 23 ABC and joined with us we have our friends at the National Weather Service and we're here at the side of the Kern River socially distanced and safe away from the bank at a calm part of the river but this can be deceiving. This isn't necessarily calm, right Jeff? That is correct. Right now the um, you know we had a, a relatively dry uh, uh, winter season and so the the capacity up at Lake Isabella is about 35 percent. However, uh, the water is still very cold and it is very swift, especially as you can see through some of these narrow areas. If people like to climb, that water can be moving quite quickly. So what happens is, um, you know, this water can become very inviting, especially when we start getting into the 90s, and especially when we even start getting into triple digits. Right now, the California River Forecast Center has uh, predicted that the peak flow of the water is going to occur around the 1st of May. Okay, and so what does that mean for people who are visiting the Kern River? So what that means is that the water will be at its highest level in the, in the river basin, and it's going to be very cold, and it's going to be very swift. And one thing as we look out across the water, it looks very calm. Yeah. But underneath this surface, the water could be moving at you know 10 to 15 miles an hour, and easily knock down a person. Yeah, and especially if you look just here on the bank, you can see how mossy it is, so it's slippery. You lose your footing. Yeah. So say you find yourself in the river, and it's not a relatively calm area like this where you could get back to the bank. Say you're swept underneath or you're swept to the side in that main current. What do you do? So what do you do? Uh, the most important thing to do uh, at any point in time is to make sure that you bring a life vest. You know, these, they're relatively inexpensive, but um, when you are in the water and you find yourself in, out of control, you wanna cross your arms and put your feet out first as you go down the river. And that's the most important thing to do. Okay, should you be avoiding trees and rocks or should you be aiming for something to hold on to? Well, so what happens with rocks is the water begins to churn and you can find yourself caught up in, a, in an eddy or, a, or a, you know, you try to get to the sides. Uh, stay away from the, the branches, but try to get to the side where it's, it's a, there's an access, like where there's rocks or anywhere. Stay away from the limbs, mm -hmm. try to go towards the rocks on the edge. Okay, and those rocks can be slippery, so if you keep getting back in the river, say you're coming up on a, a rapid point like we have down river here, mm -hmm just feet first arms crossed yeah yeah and uh just try to look you know down river but if you find yourself face down you know again try to flip back over but with the water temperatures being around 57 degrees you've only got about six to ten minutes before your body starts to go into hypothermia and then when that happens you're going to start losing motor skills and the you're not going to be able to move your arms. You're not going to be able to swim. You're not going to be able to kick your feet. And so what happens is your body begins to basically go into the hypothermic stage. And at that point, you no longer are going to be able to keep yourself afloat. That's why this will save your life. You can save your life. Perfect. And this isn't a life jacket that we use in the pool. This isn't a false sense of security. This is simply if you're near an open, unrestricted body of water, right? Yeah, exactly. And so there is the, the U.S. Coast Guard approved. Mm -hmm. So we do encourage, you know, to get a good quality life jacket. Now, one thing that we have seen in these kind of conditions is a lot of these are alcohol related situations. And yeah, I can understand coming down to the river and, you know, having a couple of beers, but Understand that if you get into the water, not only is this water very, very cold, but if you are inhibited by alcohol to be able to respond, that's another thing against you. And so we really encourage folks that if they are gonna come down to the river and drink, don't get in the river, <laughs> stay out of the river. So be responsible. And there are safe places to play in the river. We have Hart Park that's designated. We have guided tours out of Kernville and the Upper Kern that can safely guide you through. Do you recommend that over just picking a spot like this that's beautiful and looks very inviting, but there's nobody around to help? Yeah, no, I, I, I uh, highly recommend the more populated areas because then if something happens, 
there will be other people around to be able to uh, reach out for you, maybe throw a rope. Uh, and there's been several instances throughout the, the valley where people have, you know, reached out to save other people. And there was a situation last year, unfortunately, where a man died saving a young girl's life. And so uh, it, is, it is good to be kind of in a, where there are other people. If you find yourself as a single person alone, that we don't recommend that at all. We really don't recommend you doing that. But again, with the snow melting, the water's coming down through the river. The water is very cold. And even though we didn't get a lot of snow, there's still gonna be a lot of water coming down. So just uh, it, don't be uh, deceived by the concept of, you know, well, we had a dry winter. It's not gonna be that bad. No, it can, it can still, still be scary. Still be scary. And I know at times when the water is lower, it can actually be more dangerous because there are more trees and debris from underneath that are exposed to catch people and catch items and make it hard to get out. So just one of those stay out, stay alive kind of messages. Absolutely. And the thing about it is, is that the, the condition of the river is constantly changing because you know, if the, if the water's really picking up, which we expect in, in around the 1st of May to be around the peak flow, then you've got limbs, you've got rocks, small rocks, you've got various things that are underwater that are hidden, that you can't see it. So you think, oh, this is a calm area, and then you step and you, you cut your leg on a rock or a, on a limb. Now suddenly you've got that as another uh, uh, danger. And so that's one thing we wanted. It's just, even though it looks inviting and it looks wonderful, we really do encourage folks, um, if you can, if you can, uh, you know, go to designated swimming areas and, and stick to that, it'll, it'll be a much more positive experience for you. And again, if you're a strong swimmer, that's going to help. If you're a weak swimmer or you don't get in the water very often, and or if you've been consuming alcohol and your judgment is impaired, then I would highly recommend to stay out of the river. Stay out of the river. I love it. Anything we didn't touch on that you want to make sure people know about cold water safety? So I think the biggest thing with cold water safety is uh, just understanding that it looks peaceful and inviting, but it's the silent killer. It can be very difficult. Scary. Difficult. Scary. Yeah. yeah. All right, Jeff, thank you so much. I really appreciate you taking the time to meet us here. It's beautiful. We love it. And we're going to enjoy this river safely as Absolutely. the months go on. Absolutely. Thank you so much. <laughs>